this is actually the a public hearing um, for a review of the text amendment request for uh, 112 Washington Avenue. Uh, desirous of expanding the business to include auto sales, the petition seeks to amend Chapter 27, Section 903.39A to reduce the minimum lot size for vehicle sales from the current one acre requirement to three quarters of an acre. And it's not a zoning, this is not a variance for one individual. You can look at them as a sample of what would be allowed if the request they're making is granted. But if this is granted, it's a legislative request. We change the zoning one such that any business that had the requisite acreage would be able to do it. So it's, it, it does benefit them, obviously, they're asking for it, but it's not a special favor or kind of a variance for one, one set of uh, folks. I don't think we're asking for a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of innovation involved here, but this will have a positive impact on the part of any kind of going forward. Yes, Mike. Yes, uh, my name is Mike Cheeto. I live down on Station Street, and um, I'd like for you to vote uh, in favor of this. Um, Ruby and his family, his wife Alexa, are nothing but hardworking individuals. He is living the American dream. It is my hope that all of you vote in favor of this. And it is my intention, if you send it to me, to sign it. All right, all those in favor? Uh, all right. All those opposed? Motion passes. And just for the record, I think a lot of people up here, you know, very happy with what you're doing down in North Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Mm -hmm. yeah. It should have been done 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. I wasn't here then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, rock salt contract. A motion of the borough council awarding the rock salt contract for the 2015 and 2016 winter season to the lowest responsible bidder cargo in the amount of $69.29 per ton delivered. So, Bruce and Jason, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, motion for a council regarding the renewal of current estimate number 1 2015 CCTV project to Insight Pipe Incorporated in the amount of $22,083.81 for work completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed by engineer sites. So moved. Second. All right, Jason and Bruce, and your comment. I'll comment on the point repairs and the CCTV. We have, I have no idea as to what point repairs are done. Which, which streets? Are we in there? What are the list of projects? Which ones did we just finish? How much inflow and infiltration are we going to prevent by what we just spent? Now, I'm not asking for some special report. I'm just pointing out that we don't know what the list was. We don't know what just got crossed off the list and got done. And we don't know what's left. Now, by, by saying that, I don't know. That, um, these point repair projects are not, their, their sole intent is not to reduce that infiltration into the mm -hmm. lines. They're like you have potholes in your road. And I like to compare it to the roads because we can see those. So when we have what's called a level 5 defect, it means that the pipe is broken down. It's either collapsed or there's holes in it. So the sewage is getting out of the system. So right now under our own M plan, you're required to identify level five and structural defects and then correct them. Now that is just part of your own M. And my question still stands. Can you give me a list of the potholes? Which ones did we just fix and it came off of the list? Here's the list. Here's what we're trying to do. We've got those four done. Doesn't it make you feel good when you see we got we got these four things done? Well, and we I think could, our community is paying a lot of money. It would be nice if our community knew what did we do with it. The thousand-page report that you're talking about is it already prepared? It's in our database. Could you send it? Well, it's in a database that we could print out. Happy. Don't need it printed. Whatever electronic method, maybe Excel, it would be nice to have and to see. It's that kind of thing. Well, we We're spending a lot of money, guys. I think it would be nice for us to know what 
we're doing. Now, I'm interested, I'm curious. I'm, what, I'm not asking for, for anyone to do anything more that is already existing, but it's nice to get the information. Thank you. All right. That's my Pat, you sound like a micromanager. You know, these gentlemen here have a manager. She does her job. You, you're putting such a burden. I don't want to know. I know they're getting done. There's a chain of command. You don't have to micromanage. No, I'm not trying to micromanage at all. And that's specifically what I, what I spent about 10 minutes trying to avoid is asking them to create more information. When she said she had a thousand page whatever it was. What do you, what do you want a thousand page report for? Because that's what I thought she already had done. And it's whatever it is that they already have, I'm willing to work with it. I don't want you to spend any extra time or effort to send the raw data. Didn't you, didn't you a couple months ago pass? I mean, when you talk about this, then you issue I mean, you, you knew what it was. No, we never. We, you had to have. You approved the money. You approved paying the money now. You had to approve the job a month or two months ago. Am I right? Am I right? Look in your look in your notice from a couple months ago, Pat. You you know what they're doing. Okay. If, if it's there, continue. If it's there, I'd love to see it. Uh, motion for a council warning bid for the 2015 pavement maintenance contract B Marble Road to Lowe's Responsible Bidder, TA Robinson Asphalt Paving, the amount of um, we would decide whether or not we're going to do daylight or nighttime work. But the difference is four thousand dollars to do it at night. And I would I would I would recommend doing it at night. Make motions. Bruce and Bill Clusey, all those in favor? Aye. It's okay. It's up. All those opposed? Motion passes. Yes, Just a comment on this. Yeah. In 2013, this road was repaired. Everyone is understanding that there is something wrong. We don't know what. So at least four times it's been cold patched. Some of those recently. So the concept that it was a freeze and thaw during the winter has been I'd say ruled out. I, you know, I know that we, that we have a contractor that did the work two years ago. We had gateways that monitored the work two years ago. I really think that you ought to consider having someone come in and look at this that's independent of the contractor you're hiring, the contractor you had before, that is going to take a look at this and give you a report as to what's going on, preferably yeah. beforehand. If not afterwards, I mean, we're talking about seventy two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars of our money. We should at least know what happened. We may even find out that there's a bigger problem. So I'm suggesting you need you retain someone to do that. And we're going to I mean, we're, gonna, we're meeting on they're going to meet on Monday, right, to go over the next step for this. So that's something we need to talk about. I just wanted to add that um, what was done the work two years ago was just a mill and pave. So they just did the surfacing. And then this problem, which has been determined, is from the sub base and the drainage. So the road was not completely reconstructed two years ago. So the contractor that did that work was important. It wasn't with the contract. The problem wasn't the, the wearing surface, it's the material underneath. And that's to address, that's what this project is. And that's just the 30 seconds that Joe gave So he can speak more to that. Uh, public safety, so Henderson. Nice point. Um, we had a public safety meeting uh, in lieu of a lot of the things that were brought up at the last council meeting. One, the Ridge Road and the traffic, the truck traffic situation up there. Uh, we've had some uh, communication with Lori and Tom, the communication with some key players in, uh, from Upper St. Clair and that particular bedroom operation. Um, we're continuing to enforce the ordinance that we have up there right now. Uh, we've also moved again to monitor since the communication has happened with those folks and believe that there's been a reduction in uh, the truck traffic that's going up there. But we're going to continue to monitor that uh, and continue to enforce it. Um, you know, 
as you were going to read. So, uh, one of the other things we looked at in lieu of a comment that was made was the no turn on red coming out of Freshly Road. Um, there's been a, a response uh, from PennDOT um, basically indicating that where that no stop or where that stop line is on Presley is back far enough to allow traffic traveling north on Washington Pike to make a left turn on Presley. That would make it a dangerous situation if we let that traffic come down to the foot of uh, Presley Road. So well, that after last meeting, the next morning, Mike and I flew to Appleton, Wisconsin to uh, go to help with the fire department to go to the new fire truck. And we spent two days on a punch list and went through the demonstrations of it. Uh, it is a beautiful piece of equipment. It's very well done. Right. And, and everybody here knows what that truck costs. I mean, it was a million dollars. Yes, that's a very lot of money for a piece of equipment. And I asked Bruce that when he was up there, and his answer was, he can understand why now. Yeah. Well, that, ours wasn't the most expensive. There no. were more other expenses. There was more ones, but you see what goes in place to understand why there's so much. Uh, it's, you know, you, got, you have an apparatus that's going gonna, it's gonna to service this community. 25 years, 20 to 30 years, 25 to 30 years is what that truck was designed yeah. to so design it's, it. I mean, it's a piece, it's an apparatus that's going to service this community well, and uh, you know, it's something to be proud of, it really is. I, um, I can tell you, just in my, in my professional career, because I deal with firemen every day, and you know, we have a volunteer fire department, and there's many, many small communities, the size of Bridgeville, that their fire departments are not volunteer. Um, you know, they can't find the people to, to do it, so they just pay, they put it on a tax and they pay their fire department. So, you know, we're very appreciative to what these guys do. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So, Bruce, you you all those in favor, aye. Thank you very much, everybody.